In this video, we will be solving part C of this question which says, Does Elmo have convex preferences between dimes and quarters? Now, before discussing the solution of the question, let's first understand what do you mean by convex preferences. By definition, the preferences are convex if whenever the consumption bundle x1, x2 is indifferent to the consumption bundle y1, y2, then we say that the combination bundle of x1, x2 and y1, y2 which is tx1 plus 1 minus ty1, comma, tx2 plus 1 minus ty2 is weakly preferred or is at least as good as the consumption bundle x1, x2 such that t is between 0 and 1 where both 0 and 1 are included. In simple terms, convexity says that consumer prefers averages to the extremes. So if the consumer is indifferent between x and y, then she prefers the average tx plus 1 minus ty to either x or y where the weight t is given to the consumption bundle x and the weight of 1 minus t is given to the consumption bundle y. Now, I know that this definition might seem a bit complex at first. So, let's break it down into three parts so that we can easily apply this definition to a question or any indifference curve to see if the preferences are convex or not. The first step is to choose any two consumption bundle such that the consumer is indifferent between them. The second step says find the combination bundle or the weighted average bundle for different values of t. So this is the formulation for your combination bundle or we can say it as weighted average bundle where the weight t is given to x bundle and the weight 1 minus t is given to y bundle. The third step is if the weighted average bundle is weakly preferred to the extreme bundle for all values of t then we say that the preferences are convex. That is, that this weighted average bundle should be weakly preferred to or that means or should be at least as good as these extreme bundles where the bundle X and bundle Y are considered to be your extreme bundles. And this should hold true for all values of T where T is between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 are both included. So let's apply these steps one by one to see if the preferences are convex for Elmo or not. If you recall from previous parts of this question, we drew these indifference curve for Elmo and we also saw that the shaded area on the graph consists of all the combination of the quarters and dimes that Elmo thinks are just indifferent to having two quarters and one dime where this point corresponds to two quarters and one dime. Now notice that on the x-axis you have quarters and on the y-axis you have dimes and as we learned in the previous part that this shaded region which is inclusive of this red indifference curve is known as your indifference band. So this red indifference curve and this red shaded region is your indifference band. So in the video whenever I mention indifference band I'm, I'm talking about this entire region which is inclusive of this red indifference curve but not this green indifference curve as I already explained you in the previous part. Now the first step of the definition says that you have to choose any two consumption bundle such that consumer is indifferent between them. So let me choose this consumption bundle and this consumption bundle. Now note that since they are belonging to this indifference band hence the consumer or Elmo would be indifferent between them. You could have chosen any other consumption bundle this or this this or this. So it's just I'm randomly choosing these consumption bundles so that you're able to understand the concept. But the choice of consumption bundles here does not make a difference till the point the consumer is indifferent between those two consumption bundles. Now this consumption bundle will have the value of approximately 2,7 where at this consumption bundle Elmo has two quarters and seven Times. And this consumption bundle would be of the form 8,1 where Elmo has 8 quarters and 1 time. Now after choosing two consumption bundles such that the consumer is indifferent between them, let's move on to the next step which says find the combination bundle or the weighted average bundle for different values of T. 
Now at both of these scenarios he either has lot of dimes or lot of quarters. Now what if he says I don't want to be at these two extreme scenarios where I have lot of dimes or I have lot of quarters and I'm short of the other. What he says I want to be in the middle of it. That means he is giving equal weightage to both the scenarios. That means he's giving equal weightage and thereby he wants to be somewhere in the middle of both the scenarios where he have sufficient dimes and sufficient quarters. If he is giving equal weightage to both of them, that means your t would be 0.5 as t belongs to 0 and 1 and the middle point of that is 0.5. So if he is giving equal weightage to both of them to both the consumption bundle, that means his t should be 0.5. And if his t is 0.5, then let's calculate this combination bundle or the weighted average bundle. Now here, let me assume that this is your consumption bundle x. So that means your x1 comma x2 is equal to 2 comma 7 which means your x1 is 2 and x2 is 7 and let me assume that this is your consumption bundle y1 y2 that is y1 comma y2 is equal to 8 comma 1 that means your y1 is 8 and y2 is 1. Now if you see this formula, we have t, we have x1, we have y1, we have x2, we have y2 but we don't have 1 minus t. So let's calculate that as well. In order to calculate the weighted average bundle, so that would be 1 minus t is equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 which is equal to 0 0.5. Now remember that in this particular question just to explain you the concept I am calculating this weighted average bundle but once you understand the concept then there is no need to do this mathematical calculations and you will be directly able to figure out if the references are convex or not. So your weighted average bundle would be 0 0.5 of x1 which is 2 multiplied by 2 plus 1 minus t which is 0 0.5 again multiplied by y1 which is 8 comma t x2 so that would be 0 0.5 multiplied by 7 plus 1 minus t by 2 that is 0 0.5 multiplied by 1 so if you solve this, you will get 1 plus 4, which is 5, comma, 3.5 plus 0.5, which is 4. So your weighted average bundle, if you give the equal weightage to both of these consumption bundle, would be 5, comma, 4, where you have 5 quarters and 4 dimes, which would be somewhere here. Likewise, if Elmo gives higher weightage to this consumption bundle, and as we have assumed that this is your consumption bundle x1 x2 so he is giving a higher weightage to it which means by this formula which is short form of this that your t should be greater than 0 0.5 suppose your t is 0 0.7 then you would be in this region that is between 2 comma 7 and the 0 0.5 comma 4 so that means your weighted average bundle suppose it lies here that means it would be closer to this bundle as you are giving a higher weightage to it likewise if you're giving a higher weightage to 8 comma 1 then your t should be less than 0 0.5 suppose it is 0 0.3 i'm not calculating these values as it's not really required i just calculated it here to make you understand the concept now if you're giving a higher weightage to this bundle then your weighted average bundle would lie between this region that is between this point and this point suppose it lies here now since t is between 0 and 1 and t is a real number thus you will have infinite weighted average bundle between the two points as t can take infinite value as t is a real number i have just drawn here's few but if t is a real number then this would be infinite in number which eventually trace out to a line between the two indifferent bundles now if you see that the weighted average bundle turns out to be a straight line between the two indifferent bundles. That's why I was saying that you don't have to do this calculation. It's just I'm doing it to make you understand that how the weighted average bundle turns out to be a straight line as t is having infinite values. Now after finding the weighted average bundles for different values of t, let's move on to the third step which says if the weighted average bundle is weakly preferred to extreme bundle for 
all values of t focus on this for all values of t then the preferences are convex now since we have seen that the weighted average bundle turns out to be a line then we can do a quick trick or a quick step so instead of seeing various weighted average bundles what we do is we check for the entire line at once that means we have to see that the entire line should be either making the consumer better off or should give him the exact same level of satisfaction as he was having before since as we want that the weighted average bundle should be weakly preferred to the extreme bundles if you see in this particular region of the line and this particular segment of the line that the consumer is indifferent as this segment of the line is lying in the indifference band that means it will be giving elmo the same level of satisfaction as our extreme bundles which were 2,7 and 8,1 in this particular case so that is fine now what about the remaining part of the line which is this if you see that the remaining part of the line makes elmo better off as at this point and at this point he is on the higher indifference curve which means the elmo would be having more number of soft drinks and if he is having more number of soft drinks then he would be getting a higher level of satisfaction thus this segment of the line is making elmo better off and at this point he is at even higher level of indifference curve thus he would be again getting better off so we saw that throughout the entire line elmo is either indifferent or is better off than the extreme bundles thus we say that the weighted average bundle is weakly preferred to the extreme bundle hence the preferences are convex for this particular case now you might be thinking that the line will always lie above the indifference curve but there could be scenarios where it will lie partially below the indifference curve or is lying completely below the indifference curve so what i'm trying to say is consider these two scenarios where the line is lying partially below the indifference curve and is lying completely below the indifference curve now here if the line is lying partially below the indifference curve then for this particular segment weighted average bundles would be lying on the lower indifference curve that means they would be making the consumer worse off which means they are giving the lower level of satisfaction to the consumer hence in this particular scenario we would be saying that the preferences are not convex again if you consider this scenario the consumer is better off in this direction the one shown with the arrows and if i consider that these two extreme consumption bundle since they are lying on the indifference curve hence the consumer is indifferent between them and if i try and see the weighted average bundle which is this straight line or dashed line in this case then i see that this dashed line is making the consumer worse off so if i draw the indifference curve suppose through z weighted average bundle so pardon my drawing and try to get the concept here then the weighted average bundle would lie on the lower indifference curve that means it would be giving the lower level of satisfaction to the consumer hence making the consumer worse off which again means the preferences are not convex as for the preferences to be convex we we need that the weighted average bundle should either make the consumer better off or should at least give him the same level of satisfaction which is not happening here thus we see the preferences are not convex but here as we saw that for some particular segment of the line the consumer was getting a higher level of satisfaction and in the some segment he was getting at least the same level of satisfaction thus we said that the preferences are convex